Welcome to the Pageantry Podcast. And today's very special Pageantry Podcast guest, calling in Miss Earth USA 2020, Lindsay Coffee. Good morning, Lindsay. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you, Carl. I'm so excited to talk to you. How are you today? I, I'm excited to speak to you. After seeing you here in Orlando, I've been waiting, waiting, waiting. It has been a crazy time to catch up together. I know you're in the middle of a competition. I know that you're actually in New York right now. I'm here in Orlando. So since you're so busy, if you're ready, we'll just kind of jump right into it. Absolutely. You ready? Let's do this. What does the title of Miss Earth USA mean to you? Being a title holder, especially for Miss Earth USA, gives me the opportunity to just stand for something much greater than myself. I never thought I even had that opportunity presented to me until I joined this system. And having this title just gives me more motivation and more direction on where I really want to go and the impact that I really want to make. And having this just honestly makes me want to just scream out from the rooftop, hey, I have the ability to make a difference and so can you and let's just do this together. That's excellent. How did you become interested in even competing for the title? I know, right? Because I don't know anything about pageantry, so why? So I, whenever I ended up exploring the pageantry systems and Miss Earth came about, we just, we have the exact same priorities and our just, our priority, priorities aligned completely and having a system that completely revolved around something I was so passionate about, it spoke volumes to me. And I was like, I need to do this. If I don't do this, I'm just, watching an opportunity go by like I need to grab this so that's what kind of really got me into it was knowing that somebody had the exact same passion as me and expressed it just how I wanted to express it so that was what kind of caught me <laughs> can you explain beauty for a cause yes I love that phrase that we're a beauty for a cause so that was really what our Miss Earth USA pageant was focused on like why are you a beauty for a cause so when I answered that question and it didn't take long for me to think because I'm a beauty for a cause every day when I try and make a difference, no matter how small. So whether that is me donating my blood every 60 days, because I do have a universal blood type, or if I'm picking up trash on the side of the road, I am a beauty for a cause because I stand for something greater than myself. And my end goal was to always make an impact, no matter how small. So that is what I define as a beauty for a cause. And you live it every day. Yes. Yeah. What was the most difficult aspect competing as you are now to enter a virtual competition? Oh, it is so challenging. <laughs> so there's so many, just so many elements you have to deal with and just you're putting on an entire production yourself. You don't have that crew that does it for you. So fortunately I do have my team behind me and it's not like the Miss Earth USA pageant where I literally did everything by myself and it was just me, my cell phone and a tripod. So at least now I have a team behind me, but we have to act as an entire production. So we have to make something entertaining, make something eye-catching and something that somebody wants to watch. So that is what is the most difficult is trying to just get all of that together and put it into something very creative and expressive that will like catch someone's attention. Mm -hmm. What do you think you miss most about having to compete virtually versus on stage? Okay, well, this is difficult for me to answer because I've only, since I've just gotten into pageantry, I've had one pageant that I did on stage. So the one thing I can say that I do miss is just being in the environment because it's a different energy and there's so much energy. It's a different energy that you are introduced to versus meeting someone in person versus online. So being around all of the girls, everyone was there for the same reason, the same cause, what they were passionate about. So being in a room full of so many beautiful, intelligent, smart, passionate women, that is what I miss. I just miss that energy, that vibrance and just that, that is my number one for sure. And as I mentioned before, you are actually competing for the title of Miss Earth as we speak today. Yes. What has your schedule been like? Oh man. So, I mean, it's not too different from work because for work, I move around a lot, but this is on, we have time constraints with this. So everything we got to like, go, go, go. So we spent a week in Florida. We spent, well, we're spending 
uh, some time in New York. We had to go back to Florida. We're talking about going to DC. So it's just a lot of different locations, a lot of moving around, a lot of planning where we're going to have certain backdrops. We need to find historical famous backdrops and just making it all look elegant, elegant and poised while we do it. So it's been a bit hectic, a bit stressful, a bit overwhelming, but I say all of those in the best sense possible. So it's been amazing to put it shortly. And I've just been able to meet so many new uh, team members. So it's been, it's been hectic, but a good hectic. <laughs> Gosh, while you're here in Orlando, you go come to the most famous landmark of all, Pageantry Magazine's offices. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> what have you learned about yourself as Miss Earth USA? I've learned that I'm capable. So that was something I've always questioned myself because sometimes I feel like, who am I to make a difference? Who am I deserving of this title? Am, am I able to reach the potential that I've always wanted? So I'm my worst critic, I'm my biggest critic. And that is what this title has taught me that I am capable, I am worthy and I am deserving. So if I can put my mind to it and I really care about the cause, then I know that I'm going to be successful. So that is, that is one powerful thing that I have taught myself. Talk to me a little bit about ecotourism. Ecotourism, so this has been, this has been on trend and it should always, it should always be on trend because, because ecotourism in a sense, it's just visiting say local national parks or uh, wildlife refugees, a refuge um, where you can go and visit a place where you're actually putting, putting good into that environment. So you're supporting the local wor workforce, you're supporting the environment surrounding, um, surrounding your destination, you're um, committed to preserving that land as well. So we have a lot of ecotourism in the United States, such as Hawaii, we have Colorado, we have spots in Virginia, uh, Alaska is a big one. So whenever you get to go and immerse yourself in nature, nature, I think that is one of the best vacations because you're truly going back to your roots and you're having a once in a lifetime really experience to live like a local in that area. So you're not going to an all inclusive resort. You're going to you're going to Mother Earth. This is where you came from. You're going back to the woods. You're supporting the species and the environment within there. I think it is a beautiful, beautiful idea. And more people need to jump on that because really we don't know how long our lands are going to look like this. So it's about time that we need to step up our game, go visit and support our local communities and environments and really support ecotourism. And I really commend you on this because hard to believe the godfather of pageantry sometimes will live out of a tent because I hit all the state parks where I can. I actually live at a state park where the aquifer comes up out of the ground at 72 oh, wow. degrees or all year round, 12 months a year, 72 degrees. Yes. And I can walk from my backyard over the fence where the bears come visit me oh, my many goodness. times a week and go right into the park. It's, it, it is amazing. And I recommend I legit, that to everybody. I just got chills. No kidding. Because I love that stuff. Just being one with nature and literally having a bear maybe like 100 feet from you. It's crazy. But, oh, my God, you're so lucky. About 20 feet the other night. Oh. And I turned around and... And then the mother had the two cubs and she got a little riled up. So I just kind of walked backwards into the yeah. house, watched her yeah. eat the grapes from the wild grapevines we planted and just said, oh. have a good evening. I'll come back out. Yes, when you, know what to do. <laughs> yeah, you know what to do in those situations. And of course, you know, Miss Earth, th there's a plethora of different causes that we can look at. But one that's very specific to you is the worldwide water crisis. Can you expand on that a little bit? Okay, yes, the world, um, the water crisis is my advocacy because it's with, with uh, the climate crisis, we do have four major uh, contributors, which is global warming, pollution, biodiversity loss, and the water crisis. Now the water crisis is my advocacy because I chose it as it poses the most immediate risk to humanity and regional stability, and it is global. So the one thing that we cannot live without is water, and we have issues facing our water today it is such a broad topic so we have we have fracking we have water pollution we have water scarcity we have outdated or lack of infrastructure so we have already seen countries that have had a water crisis such as south africa lebanon india israel 
uh, Jordan, we have seen all of this. And just because they are the first countries to have a water crisis does not mean they're going to be the last. So we need to jump on this while we can, because without water, it completely ruins our life cycle. And we are facing extinction across the species worldwide. So that is why it is so imperative to address this immediately, because we only have 1% of Earth's water that is usable. And even though most of our land, well not land, but most of our world is contributed from water. So we need to take this water that we have and use, utilize it by providing more fresh water. So if we end up having hydropower plants instead of resulting um, using fossil fuels, we'll be able to turn this around and emit less uh, carbon into the air because that carbon also goes into our oceans, which, which creates um, ocean acidification. And then from the ocean, ocean acidification, we have it's called carbonic acid that gets evaporated into our um, atmosphere, which then turns into rain, which then turns into acid rain that goes into our crops where we uh, harvest our food, which um, then we consume that food. And so we're also consuming all those chemicals and pollutants as well. So a lot of people don't see that. And it's a complete life cycle that revolves, uh, water revolves around everything in our life cycle. So that is why it is imperative to get a jump on that because it affects every aspect of life. Which also heats our oceans, which brings about stronger storms, which we're very familiar with here in Florida. Oh yeah, absolutely. You guys have a lot of tropical storms going so on. So we do that. Not getting political. Yeah. Do you feel that the United States should rejoin the Paris Accord? Absolutely, because the Paris Accord is basically a goal and it sets, it helps our, it's a mindset. And if we can hold ourselves accountable, that is when we take most, we are, more prone to action. So if we are signed into the Paris Agreement and we're saying, okay, we're going to reach, we're going to lower our emissions by this year, by this much. And if we fail to meet that goal globally, we've seen like everyone knows that we did not meet that goal, that looks bad on us. So we're kind of just showing um, ourselves how to be accountable. So if we do have that written out, I feel like that is a great motivator. Let's talk a little about your dual degrees and how they may help you in promoting these environmental calls as Miss Earth USA 2020. Okay, so um, I do have a background in political science and communications. So with polit political science, I, I'm able to, basically I studied how to view politics from a humanistic and scientific perspective. So I'm able to see both sides of the argument. I'm able to be a diplomat, but I'm also able to profess my views to the best of my ability where it's there are no gray areas as well, if that makes sense. So I can be diplomatic, but then I can also stand my ground and really understand where each party is coming from. And I feel that helps me a lot with my title because with the climate crisis, I mean, it is a political issue because the only way to really combat it is to implement legislation and new policies in order to fight this. So having a political background, it makes me, it helps me analyze our policies that we have now, possible um, policies that we can uh, put into law that will really help see both sides. So we can see the benefit of humanity. We can see the benefit of the environment. We can also see the benefit of our country from a financial gain. So we have to take in all of those aspects and having a background in politics um, helps me understand each of those aspects, if that makes sense. It makes total sense. Okay. And behind you 100%. In addition to being Miss Earth USA 2020, you're also a working model. How have you been able to balance the time constraints with both? It actually hasn't been bad. So as I mentioned briefly, my with my job, I already move around a lot. I work in a lot of different places with a lot of different team members. So basically this kind of felt like the same just because I'm just constantly moving and shooting. So I haven't really had too much of a conflict with schedule, especially because um, due to the pandemic as well. So things are a bit slower on my side for work. However, I just worked, um, I just had a job yesterday and then now we're shooting Miss Earth USA stuff today. So everything has just kind of knock on wood <laughs> have played out to be super convenient for me. So nothing has really overlapped so far. I do have to book out of my agency for certain days just to guarantee that I don't have a conflict. But as of right now, it's been smooth sailing. 
and as such a young person, I'm going to call you a young person. <laughs> you, you've really traveled extensively around the world. Has that given you the foundation to carry on the work that you wish to do as Miss Earth USA? My travels, I kid you not, have honestly, they've turned me into the person I am today. Because of who, because of my experiences that I've, because of the experiences I've had, the people I've met, the places I've seen, that is who makes me, me. And being so, I like to say cultured and open-minded and well-rounded, those are all qualities I believe that I have. And being able to see how different people live, how different people interact, how uh, people, um, just the different cultures, the different foods, the different lifestyle, that has given me such a perspective on our world because I like to say that I'm more than my country. And in order to be Miss Earth USA or in order to even be Miss Earth, you have to be more than your country. So I've lived in Australia, I've lived in Africa, I've lived in Europe, I've lived in, lived in South America. So I'm not just an American, I'm a citizen of the world. And that is what really helps me carry on this title of Miss Earth USA. Very astute, thank you very much. On a lighter note, I hear you have very astute hearing. Have you been able to hear anything I'm doing over here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I know I know a few things, and um, everyone at the Miss Earth USA organization speaks so highly about you guys and like everything that you do, and they love you. Laura loves you, so I uh, I do. Oh, thank hear, you. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm here through the grapevine and stuff, everything that you guys are a part of. Um, but even again, as I'm new to pageantry, I still have never really even been able to like see many things for myself or even, um, I picked up your magazine, of course. So I've, I read through your magazine on that. So um, I'm just excited to be, that's why I'm so excited to speak to you because I just like to have my own personal like views, expressions and opinions and stuff. So everyone else spoke so greatly about you in the magazine. And I'm like, all right, I want to see this great person too. So that's why I'm so excited. Well, to thank be you. But I was really more going along that you have unparalleled hearing. That oh, you hear things that most of us can't. Oh, I thought you meant whatever I heard about your magazine. I'll take the other one oh. just as well. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so this is weird. Okay, so I've always, I just got my hearing checked the other day. I went to the ear, nose, and throat doctor, you know. So I, I've always complained that I have terrible hearing. But every time I go there, they're like, your hearing is remarkable. Like we have never really seen a test. Like your hearing is like amazing. Like it's expert hearing. And I'm like, how is this possible? Because I feel like I'm deaf all the time, but this is a weird thing. So what I'm hearing, so I'll hear like, I'll just either hear, I don't know if it's high or low frequencies, but I'll hear um, like, I'll hear things other people aren't hearing. And I know it's not in my head. Like I know it's not. And I have, I have like my doctor to tell me that because my hearing's exceptional. So um, I'll hear like low beeping or I'll hear like a wave like washing or like, I don't know, it's, it, it's very hard to, it's hard to articulate, but I'm definitely hearing things that other people aren't hearing. And it gets annoying though, to be honest, because especially if I'm trying to sleep and I'm like, okay. And I can't even hold my ears really like to get rid of it. Cause um, yeah, it's just kind of like, as soon as I have to release my head, I like hear it again, but yeah. I sometimes have that challenge, but I blame it on probably those concerts I went to when I was a lot younger, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Always standing like super close to the speaker. Oh, I would never do that. <laughs> never. <laughs> How long can they be? In a few months, you're going to be coming back to Orlando, Pageant Central, as I like to call it, to crown your successor. Even though you're only a few months still into your own reign, what advice can you provide to your successor? Well, I would like to speak to her even just one-on-one -on -one just to see how she was feeling because when I was crowned, I had so many nerves. And as I mentioned before, I felt like, can I do this? Am I deserving of this title? And that's what I had to work through. So what I would tell her is that no matter how overwhelmed she is, no matter how much she gets in her own head, you can do this. Right. You won this title for a reason. They don't just crown anyone. So. Keep that in the back of your head at all times because you are capable. If you're determined, you're passionate, then you should have no fear and you're just going to conquer. So that's what I would tell her. How can fans of Miss Earth USA and Lindsay Coffee follow you? You can follow me. So I have two Instagram accounts at the moment and well, three. So we have the Miss Earth USA Instagram account. And then I have my personal Miss Earth USA page, which is 
at, at Eco Angel USA 2020. And then I have my business, my work page, which is at Lindsay Marie Coffee. And then we have our Miss Earth USA Facebook. <laughs> and then I have my Facebook, which is Lindsay Coffee. <laughs> and yeah, I think those mainly cover um, our main, mainly utilized social media pages. I find that out every time I've got to tag something. <laughs> yeah. How many pages do we have? Here? I know there's so many pages. <laughs> I even get confused. I'm like, and it, especially I'm the one that has, has to post. So I'm posting on like three different Instagrams, two different Facebook pages. It's just, it, it's overwhelming, but it gets posted. So the job gets done. That's why I do auto post later. So they'll all go up at the same time. Oh, that's nice. I try to be very complete, you know, when I'm speaking. Is there anything that maybe I didn't touch upon that you would like to address? Let's see. Um, I would like to say if anyone is interested, the final pageant, like the coronate, coronation night of Miss Earth takes place on November 29th. So if anyone wanted to tune in, since it'll be virtual, so anyone worldwide can tune in, um, that, yes, that will be take, uh, taking place on November 29th. So I'm very excited about that. And till then, we've been doing a lot of earth talks and just talks with the general public and having interviews so we can engage with our audience and they can even get to know us on a more personal level so if they do want to take a follow and check out the miss earth page as well so they can get a schedule of events that would be great so we can keep in contact and i think that is about it we kind of covered such a broad lot of questions <laughs> so i feel like it was a good good conversation i I think it was a great conversation. Is there anybody that you would like to recognize or give a shout out to? I just want to say thank you to my team because honestly, I literally would not be here without them because I wouldn't, I would not have known what to do. I wouldn't, I would kind of be just gone. I would, I would know, have no idea where, what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to be, how am I, how I'm supposed to act really. And all they do is just tell me like, be yourself. Like this That's is, it. Yeah. And so I never knew that because I'm so brand new to just this industry. And I'm like, do I have to be a certain way? Do I have to do this? And they're like, no, Lindsay, be yourself. You, you won this for a reason. And so I just want to say thank you so much to my team, because honestly, like they've guided me to the, up to this point and they're going to continue to guide me. And anytime I even question myself, they're always there. And also thank you to my supporters as well, because even just coming into this, literally still no idea what I'm doing and everyone just shows me so much love so it makes me feel like okay I'm right I'm on the right track I'm making an impact and I'm I'm where I'm supposed to be so I just want to say thank you to everyone because honestly I've I've been feeling so grateful and I'm sure they appreciate that you are making an impact you are where you need to be actually I came in and watched the whole virtual uh pageant when it was on in August and I followed you, and when you were speaking, I knew right then and there, you'd be a great representative for the USA. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I always like to say, you should, you never really feel pressure if you know what you're talking about. And the one thing that I am confident about is what I'm capable of as a person and the issues that we're facing today. So that is something that I can at least take pride in and like really focus on. So I think, thank you for that. And today's very special guest has been Miss Earth USA 2020. Lindsay Coffey. Lindsay, I really appreciate your time today. No, thank you, Carl. Okay. I honestly thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been my pleasure.